bring literacy, art, poetry, and science to your classroom with the Georgia River of Words program. And my name is Linda May. I'm going to be moderating this session, so it is recorded. Um, you can ask questions in the chat box, and we will probably save the chat strand as well, um, if anyone wants that for notes. And our speakers today are both with the Georgia DNR Environmental Protection Division. That's the sister division of um, the Wildlife Resources Division that I work for. Monica Kilpatrick, she is the Project Wild, I'm sorry, Project Wet, I'm so used to saying Project Wild, Project Wet or Water Education Today and River of Words State Coordinator for Georgia's Environmental Protection Division. With a passion for environmental education, she has spent the past 25 plus years teaching students, teachers, and non-formal educators about the wonders of our natural world with an emphasis on our water resources. She has served on various state and national nonprofit boards, including the Project Wet Foundation and the Environmental Education Alliance of Georgia. And then we also have her coworker, Jackie Encinas, um, also from Georgia DNR EPD. She's a program assistant for the outreach unit of Georgia's Environmental Protection Division. After graduating from the University of North Georgia with a BS in biology, she found her calling as an environmental educator by serving with AmeriCorps for the National or and the National Park Service. She's worked with students of all ages, teachers and community members, inspiring them to appreciate and conserve the environment. So let's give a warm welcome to both of our speakers this morning. Thank all you, right, Linda. take it away. And I'm gonna put myself on mute so you don't have to hear my geriatric cat in the background. <laughs> well, we're gonna wanna hear from you in a minute, so don't go far. Okay, I, oh, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just muting the cat. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Okay, welcome. Thanks for being here, everybody. Let's get our presentation going. Okay, so as Linda mentioned, um, we're gonna talk the next several minutes about Georgia River of Words, which is an environmental education, art and poetry um, program and competition. So Linda did a good job telling us, telling you all who we are, but we wanna learn a little bit about each of you. And so if you don't mind turning off your mute, we're gonna go through and just everybody say your name, say the organization or school that you're with, and then tell us your favorite outdoor place and why. So um, I'll start just to get us going and then we'll go through. So again, my name is Monica Kilpatrick. Um, I am the state coordinator for Georgia River of Words and Project WET programs at the Environmental Protection Division. And I would say this time of year, my favorite outdoor place is a park in my neighborhood. Um, it's great to get over there this time of year, hike around in the woods, um, there's a stream and a small waterfall there. So I like to listen to the, the relaxing sounds of the water and sort of just look at the beautiful uh, color of the leaves this time of year. And yeah, yeah. So I'll go ahead and uh, take this next one. So um, hi, everybody. I'm Jackie Encinas, and I'm a program assistant for the outreach unit. Uh, my favorite place, outdoor place, is Tuolumne Meadows. It's over in Yosemite National Park. And, you know, most of the time people think when they think Yosemite, they think of the giant granite walls. But I really think of the, I just love the meadows, like more on the outskirts of the park. Um, it's just so vast and beautiful in the springtime. So that, that's my favorite place. Thanks. So who'd like to go next? Linda. All right, well, I, I don't know that I can name one favorite place. That's really difficult. Um, but Kitty Spivey's on, on the call here. And I just recently visited South Georgia with her and the pine, longleaf pine flatlands or flatwoods down there are beautiful this time of year. Um, tons of golden wildflowers in the understory, mostly goldenrod, but different types of, of asters. And um, 
it was just absolutely gorgeous. Oh, and pitcher plants and monarchs and milkweed. And I, it was just absolutely incredible, breathtaking. And um, I'll be going down there again, uh, a little bit different area. Um, Mabel says, good morning. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll be going down there Sunday night again to do some quail covey counts um, for soup, stupid early Monday morning. Um, but I'm actually looking forward to it. So, Thanks. all right, we'll just go down the list. I'll call names out. Um, and if you want to speak, please do. How about Mercer? Hi, um, I'm Mercer Watt. I volunteer at Pebble Hill. And I, anywhere outside, wherever and whenever I am is when it's is my favorite because I like all the seasons. Um, I'm also currently taking a lot of um, micro, uh, macro, I guess you say, photography and all the little details. And sometimes you don't even see them until you've looked at the pictures again. So I'm, I'm always interested in any way I can learn to expand what I know. Great. All right, James. You'll have to unmute yourself. All right, let's move on to Jenna. Hi, um, my name is Jenna. I am the naturalist at Fort Yargo State Park. I was previously at Hard Labor Creek. So I've worked for DNR now for about three years. Um, my, my favorite this year, I guess, I just got back from San Diego visiting some family and I got to spend some time in Joshua Tree. And that was really cool. Like I um, am very much a big tree person. One of my favorite places is the Redwoods. And I was really surprised as to how much I really like the desert. I think there's a lot of cool stuff going on. Very good. All right, how about Karen Wood, our fearless EEA executive director? Hi. Gosh, when you asked that question, I was just thinking how to, how to how do you choose a favorite place? But the first one that came to mind was Roan Mountain, um, just because it's so spectacular when all the rhododendrons are in bloom. But even when they're not, it's misty and mysterious. And, and you sort of, as you hike in that area, you know, either you're kind of enveloped in these beautiful large rhododendrons that are arching over your head, or else you're out in these beautiful big balls where you can see a great view of the the Smokies, and either way, I'm, I'm in love with that part of the country, um, as well as a lot of other parts of the country. And Monica, I'm sorry, but I just wanted to let you know, I have to pop out and pop back in at one point during the session, so. No worries Good to see everybody. All. It's recorded, it's all good. You can come yeah. catch up on the goodness. All right, Miss Kitty, how about you? How are you doing this morning, and what's your favorite outdoor space? Let's see. Okay. <laughs> Good morning. Um, we were so uh, glad to have Linda with us um, <laughs> last week. I'm uh, Kitty Spivey, the um, program coordinator at Pebble Hill Plantation, and we have a new learning center. So um, I was very excited to share that with Linda this week. And um, we, like she said, we found some awesome monarchs hanging out in our garden so we would invite all of y'all to come see them but um you know it, it is a hard question um but I will have to say I'm gonna uh copy what Linda said one of my most favorite places especially this time of year is um the big woods at Greenwood Plantation and if uh, you all ever have a chance to see it especially in October um these trees are magnificent longleaf pine, one of the most um, amazing ecologically significant places on the planet. And it's right here in Thomasville and it has amazing flowers and beauty and color and the sounds of when the wind blows through the trees sounds like the ocean and it's just an amazing um, place to be. So um, hopefully you all get to visit it sometime, but. Thank you, excited about being here. Yay. All right, we've got a few more. How about Stacy Smith? 
I'm Stacy Smith and I live in Athens, Georgia. I'm with Keep Athens, Clark County Beautiful as the program education specialist. And um, I think my favorite place outdoors is I really like Alpine Meadows, which means you're out west hiking. And I really like to identify things on vacation. So just being up there and looking at what all the different flowers are. And I really like it if I can find a pika. Pika are pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that video of them uh, screaming out like, like a British man. It's hilarious. You'll, you'll have to Google that later. All right, last but not least, how about Tixie? You're gonna make me do this, huh? <laughs> yes, we're gonna make you do this. Ta -da! <laughs> oh, you look marvelous. I, I got the lighting right while everyone was talking, or better at least. Um, I'm Tixie Fowler. I'm an environmental educator certified through EEA's ATIG program. Woohoo! And uh, I work for the Georgia Association of Conservation Districts and I do program outreach. And not, this will be, I'm giving you a segue, Monica. Truly from the heart, my favorite place is to be near water. Um, and I, there's a place not too far from my house where I have access to the Chattahoochee. And I just love going up there because. Um, especially during all the stuff that's going on now, but then all the things that go on in daily life, um, getting up by the river and just seeing that it's been there forever and hopefully will be there for many, many more eons, um, just puts everything in perspective, makes, allows me to take a deep breath. And I did a, a time lapse of the clouds the other day and just looking back in that, it's almost like a, it was 15 minutes reduced to about two minutes. And even then it's a meditative moment every time. It's just so beautiful and so water. <laughs> Yay. Awesome. Thank you, Tixie. Thanks, everybody. Um, glad to meet you all. Happy that you're here. We're going to, we only have 30 minutes, so we're going to talk fast. But as Linda said, the session is recorded, so don't worry about taking any notes. Um, if you were able to pre register for this session, and I don't think um, many of you were, but you would have received an email for, from us asking you to gather some materials. So we are going to do um, a quick hands-on activity in a few minutes. And the materials required for that are a piece of paper, some washable markers, and a spray bottle. So if you have those handy, great. If you don't, you can just follow along as we do it and maybe um, jot down those materials so you can do this activity with, with students another time. So also one of the exciting things about River of Words is the diversity of art and poetry that we get from students all across the state. So we've sprinkled some of those winning pieces throughout the presentation. Um, one of my favorite poems from last year's competition is the wet green jungle. Um, we went on a hike in the wet green jungle. We were climbing the steep and slippery hills. We were listening to the birds chirping. We were touching the cold water passing through the hills. We were feeling fresh and calm. We went on a hike in the wet green jungle. And that's from a little first grader um, in Swanee. And he was selected again as a state winner in 2019. So what is River of Words? Um, for those of you who may not be familiar with the program, it is an environmental education, art and poetry education program and competition. And it was originally started in the 90s by the former US Poet Laureate, Robert Haas. And Mr. Haas decided to use his tenure as Poet Laureate to focus on environmental education and getting kids outside. Um, he knew that uh, students could name over 100 corporate logos, but most could not name 10 plants and animals that were native to their area. So he had a real passion for getting students to learn what he called their place in space or their ecological address. So even after he left DC and returned to California, he maintained the River Awards program and it's now housed in the St. Mary's College, which is near San Francisco. It is a national and international program, so they have two, two arms. Um, and Georgia actually started participating in the program in 1997. And we were the very first straight state to have a formal partnership with River Words and actually have a state coordinator identified by the program. 
So in addition to the Environmental Protection Division as a coordinator, we also partner with the Georgia Center for the Book, which is based in the Decatur Library, and they're associated with the Library of Congress. So the Center for the Book folks help us judge the poetry every year. They also help coordinate the big awards ceremony that we do in May. The theme for the competition never changes. Every year it's watershed. So who is the program designed for? Um, kindergarten through 12th grade students. They can submit entries as individuals or they can work as a class and do individual work, but in a group setting, if that makes sense. So unlike some competitions, it doesn't have to be work that's submitted by a teacher or a facilitator. Anybody can participate that's kindergarten through 12th grade. It's designed for both classroom teachers and non-formal educators. So there are a lot of church groups, scout groups, um, nature centers that, that take a group of kids and talk to them about their ecological address and then help them submit their art and poetry. It's interdisciplinary. Um, you'll see in a few minutes, there are several schools, especially those STEAM and STEM schools throughout the state that have adopted River of Words as one of the programs that they promote throughout the year. And so the social studies teacher may take on um, teaching kids about different environmental regulations in our state or talking to them about um, air pollution, water pollution, maybe endangered species, et cetera. The science teacher then will help teach students about um, set of, of the native plants and animals to the area, take them outdoors, get them familiar with how water flows in their area. And then the language arts and the fine arts teachers can then help those students really hone in on what they learned and get those creative juices flowing and they can create their art and poetry. So the students get their inspiration from everything around them. The judges for both the state and the national competition are really looking for work that's been inspired by the students' watershed in which they live. So they can be looking out their bedroom window. They can be in their backyard. They can be on the schoolyard. They can be at a park in their community. They are, they're not expected to travel or study um, exotic places or or plants and animals that they may, may never really come in contact with. Um, it's, it's all about getting students to learn about what's right there around them. So it lends itself very well to the time we're in now where um, a lot of classrooms are experiencing hybrid learning. Some of those students may be in the classroom, some are at home, maybe all are at home. Um, this is a program that teachers can easily incorporate no matter where the student is. So some details about the competition. The deadline in Georgia is February 1st every year. All the entries are sent to the state office. We then sort them into categories. So we have an art category, poetry category. Then there are four subcategories. So they're divided into grade levels, K2, 3, 5, 6, 8, 9, 12. Then we do a massive state judging. So the poetry is sent off to the volunteers at the Center for the Book. The art stays at EPD. We do our state judging. And then the top approximately 100 pieces are then sent off to the national office where they, became part, where they become part of the national judging. So they're combined with entries from all over the country. The national office then selects, of all those thousands of entries, they select eight um, grand prize winners. So four in art, four in poetry, one in each of the four age categories. In addition to the grand prize winners, they select approximately 25 nationals, national finalists each year. So um, one of the exciting things about Georgia is that every year since 1997, we have had students recognized on the national level. And every year with the exception of one, we've had an, at least one national grand prize winner. So the kids in Georgia are doing awesome work um, and it's really inspiring. Um, many of those students then get to go out to California to the national awards ceremony and that's really exciting for them. So after the national judging occurs, all of the entries are returned to the state 
and any kids who are recognized on the national level are combined with approximately 50 students who are selected as state winners. And those, all those students are invited along with their families and their teachers to an awards ceremony held in May every year. And um, we do a big event where the kids are invited to come up on stage, read their poetry, talk about their artwork. Um, we, we display a big, um, or we debut a big display of their art and poetry that travels through the library system across the state. We also take all the winning pieces and we create a gallery that's on our website. And then we also produce a full color art and poetry journal. We produce posters, um, classroom sets of bookmarks that all feature the winning work. So why participate in the River of Words? Um, well, it nurtures respect and understanding for the, nature, the natural world. Um, it promotes literacy. It really fosters, again, that collaboration amongst teachers and helps them to integrate arts into their curriculum. It gives the students a forum for expressing creativity and their concern for the environment. Um, it helps develop that sense of place. And all of the materials are free. And we provide a lot of resources for educators to get involved. So how do you get involved? Um, we do have a teacher's guide that's available for free for anybody who's interested. There are entry forms in the guide as well as available on our website. Again, all of the entries are sent to our office by February 1st. And then every student who participate does receive a certificate of participation. And one of the cool things about River of Words is that all of the original artwork is returned to the students. So after we received everything back from um, the national office, we then sort it return it by the end of the school year back to the teachers or to the individuals. And then any students who receive um, recognition as a winner, they pick up their original art or poem at the award ceremony at the end of the year. One of the things I wanted to share is a success story from this most um, recent school year. And that is the Sagamore Hills Elementary School in DeKalb County. So Sagamore Hills is a certified STEAM school. And last year, last school year, they decided to use water as a theme to sort of flow throughout the school year through all the grade levels and all the subject areas. So their science lab teacher took every classroom outside and did different explorations with them on the school grounds. They all got to um, walk the watershed they got to get in the creek that flows through the school grounds. They learned about the plants and animals in the area. They followed any potential pollutants. So they, would, uh, they learned about where that, pollution, where that pollution may have come from and where it may go. And then back in the classroom, the teachers helped the students take what they learned, write poetry, create artwork. And then the school hosted a community-wide River of Words celebration. So they invited the students, their families, and the broader community to come one evening and the students read poetry and the school hosted an art walk. So folks could walk through the school and, and view the artwork. Then they submitted all of those entries to the competition. And um, one of the exciting things that came out of that is they actually had five students who were selected as winners last year. And of those five, two received national recognition. So it was very exciting um, for the school and again, the community. Hey, Monica, we got about five minutes left and I just wanted to um, mention a few things in the chat box. Uh, so Tixie was wondering if photography counts as art and then she found out that it does, which is awesome. And then Karen Wood said, great point that River of Words connects kids with nature, especially since research shows that nature, I'm sorry, that connection shapes adult attitudes and behaviors more than studying the environment. What a great example at Sagamore Hills. Yeah, thanks, Karen. Um, yeah, I could go on and on about River of Words, but I can't. So we gotta, we gotta tie it up. We have an activity that we wanna do. And again, we only have a few minutes, so um, it might be a shortened version of it, but We've talked about the theme of the contest every year is watershed. And watershed can actually be a difficult concept for students to understand. So there's 
there are a few different activities that you can do with students to help them learn the concept of watershed. And Jackie's going to real quickly share one of those with us. Yes, so this activity is called Watershed in Your Hand, and it's from Project WET's uh, Urban Watershed Guide. So everyone will receive a copy of that um, in the links at the end, but I'm just going to briefly show you the basics of it. So you'll give students just a blank piece of paper, and then with water-soluble markers or colored paints, um, you'll have them draw a community. So this will get them thinking about you know, what are essential parts of your community. And then with a spray bottle, then you'll have them just lightly spray on rainwater, or I'm sorry, reverse. With the community uh, piece of paper, you're gonna want them to crumple it up. Um, so you're gonna draw it, and then they're gonna crumple it up into a ball because we know that our land is not flat. You know, there's ridges and there's valleys. So once they crumple up their piece of paper, you'll have them draw the outlines of the like topography that they see and have them draw arrows to kind of think about if we were to spray water on this as rainwater, where would that water flow? So where does water, how does water flow in our watershed? And then you'll have them do that with the spray bottle. And you'll notice that all the colors start to merge and run off together. So that's just a way to teach them about, you know, stormwater runoff, um, you know, the idea of community planning, the importance of community planning and considering, you know, the topography of your land and, you know, just to help them get the idea of how a watershed actually, you know, the significance and the function of it in their everyday life. Awesome. Yeah, that's really brief. I know we're short on time, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's um, Watershed in Your Hand. And these activities are actually available in the, teacher, um, the teacher's guide that we're gonna send all of you. So I just put a note, if you'll share your email addresses with us, we will email you in the next couple of days, get your mailing address if you're interested in receiving a packet, and then um, we'll get a teacher's packet out to each of you. So. Jackie did a good job telling us how to um, identify a watershed. In Georgia, we actually have 52 major watersheds, and this resource map is available on the resources page that we're going to give the link to you in just a minute. Also, there's an activity called Project WET's Rainy Day Hike. Um, and if you're familiar with Project WET, it's a K-12 water education curriculum. One of the activities in that guide is really good for um, introducing the concept of watershed to students. Again, as I mentioned, there are lots of activities in the teacher's guide itself to help teachers um, introduce art and poetry. Again, getting kids taking what they've learned about the world around them and um, expressing it creatively through art and poetry. And um, there's a list here. This is just one small list of what's in the guide. But we all actually participated in the randomness poetry a few minutes ago when we were talking about our favorite outdoor places. So while we were all talking, um, Jackie took some of the descriptive words that we were using and she plugged them into wordcloud.com and um, just using wordcloud.com, she put together some of those words and we have an image which is another way you can really help students to sort of um, launch their poetry. All right, get back here. All right, so I mentioned that the resources are all free. Entering the competition is free. The only thing you have to do is get the entries to us. So there may be some postage expense um, but we do return everything at no charge. So all of you um, or anybody who's interested can contact our office and we have these packets that we distribute, including the teacher's guide that again has the entry forms. Um, the 2019 and 2020 art and poetry journals are included in the packet. We'll send you a class set of bookmark, bookmarks and a poster. So that was really fast, quick and dirty, but if you have any questions, 
um, please feel free to reach out to us at any time. I can stay here, but I know there are other sessions that we need to get to. Um, our email addresses are here and we're gonna share all of those resources in the chat. And before I sign off, Linda, is there anything, or Jackie, is there anything in the chat? I can't see it. Oh, uh, we've just got some good comments. It seems like everybody really um, appreciated the word cloud um, resource. And uh, Tixie said that was perfect, Jackie. So appreciate, you know, that's okay. We just, we're all looking for inspiration here. So quick and dirty works, you know, and then we can all kind of go back a little bit afterwards and digest everything a little bit better. So um, yeah, I appreciate your, your, your tips there. Wonderful program. I've, I've been around it, heard about it for a long time, but I know a little bit more about it now. And, and, and I think this would be a great way for a, a non-formal environmental educator to maybe partner with a school um, virtually or otherwise, you know, that might be a good way to adapt to the current situation that we're in with COVID um, through this River of Words program. So thank you all very much. Um, like we mentioned, this session has been recorded and I will um, hang on to the chat too. So we'll put that in the resources as well. So thanks everyone. Have a good rest of the day. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Take care. Did you stop the recording? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs>